everyone thank you so so much for tuning back into my youtube channel if you don't know me hi how are you my name is rosa please make sure to like subscribe and hit the bell to stay updated when i post new videos i post every tuesday and a couple days in between so hit that bell to stay updated subscribe like all of that thank you for the support i'm over 2,000 subscribers i cannot thank you guys enough for supporting me and my journey and sharing with you guys my expertise knowledge experience and hopefully you can use some of that into your life as well today's video is going to be about the departments in a clinical laboratory i'm sure you guys are very interested to learn a little bit more about some of the details involved in different areas of the laboratory and and what departments there are in clinical laboratories so this is just a small list of departments there can be more or less depending on the type of laboratory you're working at so the list goes you have chemistry hematology microbiology urinalysis and body fluids coagulation immunohematology and immunology so this is not a full list like i said it can be more can be less there's also some other areas that involve um like cytology histology and there's also different types of special laboratories toxicology that's one that's a really big one that could be at your job too or future job or employer so the first department i'm going to be talking about with you is chemistry so in chemistry you use pretty big analyzers beckman is one of the most popular ones i'll like put a little clip right here so i'm going to read off the description to you so chemistry Scientific study of matter and the various compounds of the elements as it relates to the human body. So common tests in the chemistry laboratory include calcium, iron, cholesterol, bun, creatinine, well, B1, creatinine, um, thyroid tests. They also do drug testing. So if you're curious to know how a drug test is run, it's so run in the chemistry laboratory on a huge analyzer. If you want to know, you know, some people want to know, some people don't. So that way you know how it's run and a hormone tests. So yeah, these are some common tests that are run in the chemistry department of the laboratory and chemistry. i am be keeping it real with you guys. Cause you know, we keep it real on my channel. It can get a little repetitive because for the most part, you're just receiving specimens. If you don't have a specimen processing area, or if you're not receiving them, you literally just like grab the specimen tube, put it on the analyzer, press go wait maybe like 10 15 minutes result is on the screen you make sure everything is in range you make sure there's no like weird or erroneous answers if there is any critical results you call the nurse or doctor to report those results and then you press send and that it goes on its way for the doctor to use to interpret and create their diagnosis for the patient so it's pretty self-explanatory that's pretty much basically what you do in chemistry some other things that you can also do in the chemistry department of the laboratory is you might have to do QC depending on what shift you're working or actually I think all shifts first, second, and third when you come in you got to do QC because every eight hours you got to do a new run make sure everything is properly running and make sure nothing is out of range on the analyzer that way the patient results are correct and they can be properly used to diagnose a patient. You may also have to do some maintenance on the machines, depending on what shift you're working on as well. You might have to do some other things such as blood gases, which has its own other analyzer, which I will put right here. And you run the patient's blood gases. So, you know, um, pH, CO2, bicarbonate, things like that. You want to get those analytes resulted. Usually if you're working in chemistry or if you're a chemistry person, it's pretty much the majority of the work you're gonna do it's not very hard it's actually pretty simple for the most part i actually like it when i'm having like a rough day or when i was having like a rough day and i wanted to be kind of like in a more chill area i feel like chemistry is pretty chill only if they're calling you for results then that can be a little frustrating but it's not very hard once you're done with the specimens you put them away and you go on about your day so we're going into hematology next all right i'm gonna be showing you some blood cells and how they look like right here so hematology hematology is the study of blood blood morphology and blood diseases a hematologist so this is part of hematology a hematologist is what we're called accounts and classifies blood cells and morphology into different categories so 
as a hematologist or you know as a tech working in hematology the main thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be putting blood samples they are in edta purple tubes which i'll put a picture of right here you will be putting them on to an analyzer which interprets the results it counts the white blood cells red blood cells hemoglobin hematocrits platelets and some other things that i can't remember right now because you know your girl ain't working there anymore but anything above the analytical range or anything below the analytical range it will flag a result you'll get a printout most likely and then from there you'll have to do a differential so what is a differential a differential is when you place blood from a tube onto a glass slide and then from there you put it on the microscope depending or sometimes you might have a machine or analyzer that does the count for you and you either manually or have it run on the machine have the blood cells counted out for you to do a differential and a differential is when you count a hundred white blood cells on the slide and then you also account for the red blood cell morphology so what the blood cells consist of you might have to count the platelets as well or have the machine run that for you and so that is what a differential is so basically what a differential is looking for is for any abnormalities in the red blood cells platelets anything like that that is what it looks for so i did mine manually when i was at my job i know they're getting like a big analyzer now that will do it for you but you still have to like sort them into their different areas using cellavision which is a really cool program and i've used it before when to make clinicals where you, like it does the differential for you the machine but then on the computer screen you have to kind of move them to the places that they go some of the components of blood cells include lymphocytes monocytes basophils eosinophils and a lot of other components platelets i can put some platelets right here too so you guys can see that and that is what we're looking for. We're looking for any abnormalities. We want to see if someone might have an elevated count, what kind of white blood cell is present currently in their blood. Do they have any type of leukemia? So blood cancers, cancers of the blood are found in the hematology department of the laboratory. If you like looking in a microscope, that interests you. I never really liked it. Too subjective for me. This is the perfect area of the laboratory for you. Don't get me wrong. It is very interesting. Just wasn't my favorite for me. And now we are going in choo, 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 to microbiology. Okay. Microbiology is the study of microorganisms. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Oh my gosh, you might hear my dad in my background. So, so sorry. He's pretty loud. We're all loud. So, okay. And it's also any bodily fluid or tissue can be cultured for infectious disease. Very true. We can do that in microbiology. Once it is cultured, it can be tested against many different antibiotics to find the most effective treatment for fighting infection while limiting opportunities for antibiotic resistance. Sounds very true. Okay, so in my laboratory, we did not do very much with microbiology besides working with the Cepheid machine. I'll put the Cepheid machine right here. So with that, we did flu tests, we did strep tests, we did COVID, we did um, flu RSV, and those are the ones that we mainly looked at in our laboratory. So in microbiology, we're also looking at bodily fluids, tissues that can be cultured for infectious diseases. And once it's cultured, it can be tested against many different antibiotics to find the most effective treatment for fighting an infection and to also prevent the opportunity for opportunistic infections and antibiotic resistance. All right. So given it, let me give an example for you. So let's say someone has the flu. So if you have a flu, they're gonna take a throat swab and put it in the back of your throat, take a little bit, and they're gonna be putting that onto a Petri dish plate, which I'll put right here. And from there, they're gonna rub it on. There's like inoculation technique. From there, they sit for about one to two days in an incubator. And then from there, the person working in microbiology or the microbiologist is the one who looks at the plates and tries to determine what type of bacteria is growing on that plate or if any type of bacteria is growing on that plate. Once that bacteria is growing on the plate and they get it, they swab it, they put it again on another plate and they use little antibiotic circles and that like little circle has the antibiotic on it and they place it on there to see if there's any resistance to the medication or if it is fought off with the medication. So that is a great example right there. Some tests that can be run in microbiology include flu, like I just went over, strep, COVID, 
Um, some other things, you can use a Molly machine, which I'll put a picture of right here. It's like a huge analyzer that actually determines what is growing from that patient culture. So that's microbiology there for you. The next area we have in the lab is urinalysis and body fluids. All right, so urinalysis is the testing of urine by physical, chemical, and microscopic means to test for the presence of diseases and drugs. So in urinalysis, like when I was in urinalysis, we actually did look at urine under the microscope. So what we had to do is we put urine into a little, um tube, I don't remember the name of the tube, I'm so sorry. Put it into a tube, we spin it in the centrifuge for about five minutes, we take it off, we just, we take off like about one milliliter of the fluid and then we leave off the sediment that stays at the bottom of the tube. And we use a pipette to kind of like go back and forth and make sure everything is mixed well. And we look at that and put it under a little microscope slide and we determine under the microscope what is seen in the urine. Some of the things that can be seen under the microscope in urine are white blood cells, red blood cells, yeast, casts, crystals, and as well as bacteria. And these are all seen under the microscope. I'm gonna put in some little pictures right here in just a moment so you guys can see how it would look like under the microscope. And it's really important to determine things in your analysis because some things that can be diagnosed are STDs like trichomonas. You can see trichomonas under a microscope slide. If someone has a UTI, if there's any problem within their kidneys, such as different types of casts, any type of issue in that area will be determined under your analysis. Next area is coagulation. Coagulation is the study of the clotting of the blood. So coagulation is kind of similar to me in chemistry as there's not very much to do. It's mostly just working with the analyzer and making sure all of the reagents are full and in place and QC is run and it passed. And then you take the, the citrate tube. I don't remember the name of it exactly, but I'll put a picture right here. I think sodium citrate. It's like a blue little tube. The blood is in there. You don't spin it. Remember in coagulation, you do not spin the blood prior to putting it on the analyzer. And it looks at the clotting factors of the blood. So people taking warfarin, Coumadin, any other type of blood thinner, this is something that might need to be run on them. Deep dimers, those are all run in coagulation. So immunology. Immunology is a study of immune products such as antibodies produced by the body response to foreign material. I don't really know what's done in the immunology portion of the laboratory because I didn't have that section when I was in my clinicals and we did learn a little bit about it in school. So I'm not really gonna go too much into that right now. But our last area that I'm going to be talking about today is immunohematology, which is blood bank. One of my favorite areas that I worked in the laboratory and most fun for me because it's very hands-on. So what do you do in blood banking? In blood banking, you are doing high complexity testing, including ABO and RH testing, unexpected antibody detection, one of my favorite things to do, and compatibility testing, antibody identification, and routine problem solving as well as blood donor selection, blood collection and processing, blood component preparation for storage and administration, and the quality control of blood bank equipment and reagents. So that is a handful, I know. Blood banking has a lot to it. So some of the main things that you're doing in blood banking include, you are determining someone's blood type. Are they A, B, AB, or O? Those are the four main blood groups. And, you know, it goes off into even more deviations, which I would love to make a video about all of these things because I'm sure you guys want to learn these things and it'll help for class, review, anything like that. So if a person has an antibody and it's found in their blood, the blood component, if they need a transfusion, it has to not be negative for the antibody or else there will be a reaction with the patient. And that is not good. We do not want that. That can cause... Um, transfusion reactions, which are very bad, and the patient can go into coma, shock, death, lots of different factors. So that's really important in blood bank. You make sure you do QC on all of their reagents because there's a lot of reagents that are used, whether they are done manually or on an analyzer. Just depends on your workload in a lab. For the most part, it's going to be done on an analyzer. So you just want to make sure everything is running okay, things are refilled, and everything is running smoothly. Blood transfusions are commonly done 
and they are a big component of blood banking as well as people who need emergency transfusions. Some other things include prepping the blood bags for the transfusion because you want to make sure you antibody test them you want to make sure everything is okay with them you want to assign them to the patient and there's a lot of protocol a lot of steps it can be kind of stressful when you're under a lot of stress from the doctor the nurse calling you saying like hey we need this blood right away so that's a little bit about blood banking and i know this is just a general overview but i hope you guys were able to learn something about the different areas of the laboratory i know i didn't go over all of them because there's tons 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 and it just depends on where you work at but these are the main ones that you will commonly see in the majority of laboratories so thank you guys so much for watching this video please make sure to like subscribe and hit the bell to stay updated when i post let me know what other videos you want to see within clinical lab, like anything really specific that you want to see. I know someone asked me about a specimen processing video. I would definitely go into that because I actually worked as a specimen processor. So talk about that, which can be a little bit different for every laboratory. So let me know in the comment section down below some things you want to see. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I can't wait to see you again here soon. Okay.